I'm doing a series on Eleanor Ostrom's book, Governing the Commons. Um, and the subtitle, I think, is also relevant, The Evolution of Institutions for Collective Action. So Eleanor Ostrom is actually the first ever female economist to win the Nobel Prize in economics. And this book, I think, is revolutionary and very, very important to understanding some of the dilemmas we have going on in society today. So I'm going to, in this video, I'm just going to set up what is the book doing, what's its approach, and then I'm going to have a series of videos that go concept by concept through some of the, mo the more important ways of thinking about commons and um, collective action that she introduces in other chapters in the book. The starting point here is going to be tragedy of the commons. And this is only one type of collective action problem because public goods problems are also collective action problems. In other videos, I explain the difference between those. Um, but her focus really is more the commons, even though a lot of what she's talking about would also apply well to public goods problems. So what is the tragedy of the commons? The tragedy of the commons is essentially where there's some common shared resource, and there's a group of people who all have an incentive to either overuse or degrade that shared resource in a way that is, is not helpful to the group. And the game theory of it is such that everybody wishes that everyone else would cooperate, but in fact there is an incentive somehow in game theory to defect, and that ends up degrading the common pooled resource. And of course, the classic example here is the common space for grazing your cattle, um, where there's a common area, everybody overgrazes their cattle, and therefore the grass in that area gets depleted such that th the next year there's no grass left for anybody to graze. Um, now, the example I think she goes back to again and again, which is a great example, is fishing, where you have a bunch of fishers who are overfishing out of a lake, depleting that resource such that eventually uh, they just take up all the fish in the lake and they, they, they're all going to go out of business. But um, commons can actually refer to um, a common space, say, on the internet, like a social media platform where the uh, cooperation is to behave well, to not harass people, to not put out false information, to not mislead, all of that stuff, a, a shared common space. That's the cooperative behavior, and of course there, there might be an incentive for people to defect, degrading the common space. So this is a very, very common um, game theory problem. Now, I have a prisoner's dilemma set up here, and she actually later in the book uh, talks about how sometimes these scenarios are not actually prisoner's dilemmas. Oftentimes they're assurance games or games of chicken, and I will have a video explaining that concept. But I think the way to start thinking about these is to uh, use the prisoner's dilemma as the base for how you're thinking about them because, of course, in all of these scenarios, there's going to be a cooperate and a defect strategy. The Nash equilibrium is for everybody to defect. And with a prisoner's dilemma, there's going to be constant collapse toward defect. Like, even if you uh, end up in a cooperative equilibrium, there's going to be a tendency for people to respond to that by defecting, which leads to other people to respond by defecting, and of course, uh, that's no good. Um, and of course, with the fishery example, cooperate is only fish, the amount of fish that would be, uh, that would allow the fish population to replenish itself every year, and the defect strategy is to overfish. Given that setup, what is Eleanor Ostrom's innovation in this space? And her innovation is over the two solutions that were common um, prior to her book. And one is, uh, of course, for the government to come in, and there's a, a variety of options for sort of forcing cooperation. You could regulate, you could assign property rights as the government. But that's the state solution to this kind of problem. And there, then there's the theory of the firm, the private solution, which is where a private company looks at the situation, recognizes that there's a need for cooperation, like everybody would be better off if 
the fish population replenished itself. And so the firm comes in and serves in that role that's a little bit government-like, that sort of enforces the rules and uh, divvies out rights to fish, all of that stuff. So you could have either the government or a firm uh, try to come up with a solution to this problem. That was, that was how economists thought before, uh, before she came on the scene. Now, her innovation is that she says, actually, those are not the only two solutions. Actually, these people can come together and recognize, hey, wait a second, we want a solution. Maybe the government's not responsive. Maybe they don't trust the private firms or whatever, or maybe the private firms have other externalities. This group can actually come together and essentially build institutions of their own, which might be socially enforced in the group, or they might be officially enforced in more of a community uh, type of way. But um, her recognition that there are ways, apart from just the government and private firms, for this group of people to solve their collective action problem. That was her innovation. And throughout the book, she adds a lot of nuance to understanding the game theory, the variation in how different people in, in this collective um, experience the situation. She adds a deeper understanding of this problem. So I think it's a really, really important book. And the book came out in 1990. But I think the ideas discussed here are super relevant today. Because what the online space has done is it's created a lot of commons. It's created a lot of collective action problems that people are out there trying to solve. Um, there's also a lot of talk of revitalization of institutions, building new institutions. And institutions, by the way, can be both formal and informal. So like markets are institutions, uh, marriage is an institution, that's sort of a social norm expectation type of institution. So with all the talk of institutions out there, I mean, institution is in the title of her book. And thinking carefully about how institutions work to solve these collective action problems, I think is one of the challenges, especially one of the economic challenges of the modern age.